Hi, it's me, Doslago, working on my Sonic game for the Commander X16 8-bit computer. And I need to understand the physics of Sonic. Well, I can't ignore Sonic Advance when doing my research. People generally is neutral positive about this game, as it is a Sonic 2D game by Sonic Team, and that means it must be good. I am not here to change your view on the game, but rather tell it could have been better. Much better. Like all my other videos, math and technical stuff will appear eventually, so you'll have been warned. If you're into that good stuff, check out my devlog here at the channel where I try to battle every little thing Sonic related and somehow make a 16-bit game on an 8-bit platform. History time. The year is 2001 and Sonic finally got into puberty, grew teeth and green eyes. His creator, Nakajuji, was currently being bullied by Miyamoto Shigeru. Hamano Takahiro, previously deleted from Sonic 3 by Michael Jackson, probably the sole credit to why this game plays like a Sonic game, was making a Sonic game together with the game studio Dimps. Dimps was clearly not in charge at the time because there weren't enough bottomless pits. And all of this led to the game Sonic N, I mean Sonic Advance for the Nokia N-Gage Advance. So Sonic Advance is a good game. Effort was made, and I have proof. I have the manual here. Let's read the story of this game. The evil scientist Dr. Eggman has hatched another dastardly plot. This better not be that same plot as back in 1991 when Sonic didn't have any teeth. He plans to build an empire by turning all animals into robots. Okay. And he wants the Chaos Emeralds too. Okay, so no effort on the story. No effort of describing why Sonic has so many friends that can do the job for him. If you know me from previous videos, you know my first rule of a Sonic 2D game. Pixel perfection. Sonic Advance fails this. So isn't that enough for me to say this game sucks and I won't touch it? No, it just means I will learn from it so I don't make the same mistakes. So the cool thing about Sonic Advance is its limited resolution, doing everything 75% of the original Sonic. I'm totally stealing that idea since it means 75% of work. So Sonic is scaled down, and so is his physics. If Sonic used to run top speed 6 pixels per frame, then he runs only 75% of that, 4.5 pixels per frame. But there is one part of Sonic physics that are difficult to understand, so difficult that when done wrong, changes how Sonic plays. And it so happens that the programmer that ported that part of Sonic Advance screwed up. The result is similar to how it would be to drive a car where the handbrake is stuck, leading to less speed. Some might say you can't drive a car with the handbrake engaged, but Sonic can. It will just be slower and feel off. Sonic is fast, even on platforms that were limited, like Sonic CD, where Sonic 1's physics doesn't stop Sonic from doing whatever he was doing in that game. Sonic 3 was made extra fast, so Sonic could run even faster than before. The key point here, Sonic must run fast, else it isn't Sonic. To gain speed in a Sonic game, the jump button is your free end. Because once you land on the ground again, Sonic will gain speed from the jump, and that speed can be faster than the max speed allowed. In order to not make Sonic's jump feel floaty and give too much speed in the process, a counteracting force is applied to Sonic at the peak of the jump, which is done by a sneaky optimized unsigned check, similar to how I made the screen wrapping work in my second devlog video. The code looks something like this in C code. If Unsigned, y velocity is higher or equal to 64,512, subtract x velocity divided by 8,192 times 256 to x velocity. Now, 64,512 is a very weird number. In hexadecimal, it's FC00. That is a little bit more helpful. You see, FC is minus 4, and 00, zero is the fraction in an 8.8 .8 fixed point format. So it's basically checking unsigned y velocity is higher or equal to minus 4.0.
This is done in one check. That means that if y velocity is less than zero or greater than or equal to minus 4.0, it should apply this counteracting force. That is great if you understand it, because then you'll just scale that stupid value fc00, which is minus 4.0 by 75%, making it fd00, which is minus 3.0, and you're done. But Dimps and Hamano Takahiro didn't understand that part because they took the entire value FC00, which is 64,512, and scaled that by 75%, making it into the hexadecimal value BCFF, which is 48,383. That is, in 8.8 .8 fixed point format, minus 67.0039. Does that sound valid to you? It is completely fail. They even had the fraction part of the fixed point number being FF instead of 00, meaning they were clueless to how Sonic even operates. The result of this is, instead of Sonic losing speed at the top of his jump arc, he loses speed from the moment he jumps or is sent by a springboard into the air until the top of the arc has been reached. This is a time loss of every jump as well as a slowdown for every needed jump to travel, even by those overused springboards. The entire game is designed with this flaw, since how would Sonic not be able to jump over spikes and bottomless pits from a standstill? However, it goes against the very nature of making a Sonic game, to slow Sonic down instead of making him faster for every new game. It was a mistake by the programmers to assume the velocity value was some random number, and actually meant something fundamental. I'll show the original demo from the game right here, and then I'll show the same demo but with the value BCFF set to FD00, the way it should have been. Sonic gets out of sync, as the physics are so different when they are right, that it changes the entire game itself. It is only one of many things that, when fixed, gets Sonic advanced closer and closer to the original games. If you want to see what steps are needed to make a Sonic game with some extreme limits of the 8-bit world, you know where to find my channel.